Hello everyone, it's David from Automotive Press. I have a fully electric Mercedes-Benz EQE 500, which is quite a fascinating mid-size luxury fully electric car. And it has a lot of interesting things. It's got some really positive things, but maybe some things that also needs to be improved. Now I'm going to be comparing this to upcoming Lexus TZ or TZ, which hasn't been announced yet, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to speculate and see how maybe Lexus the upcoming model might compete with this one right here, because this could be one of the benchmark vehicles. Let's do a quick uh, check and audit on the panel alignment. Uh, this one is built in Tuscaloosa, Alabama plant in the US, uh, where I have been a couple of times before. Uh, but let's take a look. 3.9 millimeter gap. And this hood is kind of clamshell design, so it kind of goes over here. But the rest of the uh, gap is actually really good. Three millimeter here, 3.5, and three millimeter there. So the panel alignment is good. All the um, uh, panels line up really well. The paint job is a little hard to tell right now because it's raining at the same time. But when it was uh, dry, I looked at it, and paint quality looks really excellent. I know that some of you guys are concerned about the... Um, uh, Alabama factory in the US, but they have been producing some really good quality cars these days. So everything looks good. Let's take a look inside and talk more about this vehicle. So now I'm inside the Mercedes EQE. Keep in mind there's also um, a slight cheaper version called the 350. But you know what, if you're going to spend this kind of money, just go for 500 with the more power and torque. It's got pretty good range as well, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. But let's take a quick look on the inside of this uh, EQE right now. And you know what, I don't know what to say because um, there are a couple of different options for interior package. But what I do have here is a 12.3 inches digital cluster and 12.8 inches center um, infotainment system. And everything looks good as you'll see if I start the actual car. It's quiet and a beautiful display. But I do find the interior a little bit odd because of this vast amount of uh, kind of plastic trim. I know on some trims you can get wood here as well and that might look better, but the way it is designed right now, it looks a little bit odd to me. Other than that, you get a beautiful display of uh, really bright instrumentation, a bright infotainment system, and it's much easier to use than before. They call it zero layer system, which means that all the controls are here. I don't have to dig into many layers of a menu to find things like uh, climate control and so forth. So I really like the new system for MBUX. That's really good. Lots of glossy plastic though, and they're going to be very, very uh, open to scratches. So that's something I'm not too crazy about. But what I want to do is also do a quick uh, quality check. And I have something new here, which is a filler gauges. These are what we use to measure the gap between parts and to look at the tolerances. Uh, now, interesting enough, there's almost no gaps to measure in this particular Mercedes, and that's probably by design. So engineers were really clever enough to design something in which the materials goes inside, or they overlap, and therefore I, I almost can't measure any gap. Even between the door and the dash panel are actually really tight, but there are some gaps here. So for example, between these two plastic parts, I measured it earlier, and that is exactly 0.2. 20 millimeter which is a world class usually it's closer to 0.3 millimeter sometimes even 0.35 millimeters but this one is so tight that i can barely get the 0.2 millimeter one into the uh, gap here so uh, in terms of tolerances and tightness of the parts that's coming together it's absolutely first class and i did a little punch test earlier and a little bit of a loose feel here uh, it didn't translate to, into any kind of uh, squeaks or rattle. Everything felt fine when I'm driving and there was no strange sound or noises coming through from any of the parts here. So I think the quality of the interior is also excellent. Just once again, I'm not too crazy about this design right here. But the usability and the practicality of the infotainment system is really good. And the brightness of the instrumentation is excellent. Even though this whole thing is digital, it comes really live and I can see everything clearly. Also on the steering and also in the doors, we have a number of uh, components that requires you to just touch instead of uh, pushing a button. So these are actually quite easy to use, but a little bit sensitive. And so I could be just really running my fingers on the steering wheel and I could accidentally touch any of these things and turn something on or off. So I prefer actual buttons, to be honest, uh, even though that isn't the trend these days. So overall, the interior is impressive in terms of quality, in terms of tightness of tolerances, 
and even though maybe I'm not too crazy about the interior, I think most people will walk into this Mercedes and say, wow, this looks expensive because it does look expensive. Even the, uh, the ventilation duct here has almost like an aircraft engine style. And so they always do a really good job of making vehicle look really, really expensive and nice. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the Lexus TZ or TZ. And that is a car that hasn't been announced yet and no one knows much about it. But we do know Lexus along with Toyota plans to introduce a kind of upper, more premium uh, electric car that's above and beyond the Lexus RZ, uh, which is one of the cars we own. So we know that's coming. We're not quite sure when yet. I suspect maybe next year. Uh, so that will compete directly with the EQE. And based on my own personal speculation, let me talk about that for a little bit. I think the TZ or TZ will be very much the size of the TX. So it's going to be bigger than this one, because this is a two-row, five-passenger vehicle, versus the TZ will likely be a three-row, seven-passenger vehicle. So it will be a bigger vehicle, and therefore it's not maybe a direct competitor to EQE, but in terms of pricing and so forth, it will be similar to this one. Uh, we did a quick check on the exterior right now on this model EQE on a TZ, which will likely be produced in the U.S. somewhere, either in Kentucky or maybe in Indiana, because that's where TX is produced. I think the quality will be excellent based on my experience with the TX, which has a really tight tolerances. But this one might be a little bit better. This one is, you know, sort of 3 to 3.5 millimeter, and TX was around the same, but maybe 3.2 to 3.8 millimeter gap. So just based on that historical data, uh, perhaps the EQE could even have uh, tighter tolerances for exterior compared to the TZ. Now in terms of interior design, the current trend for Lexus is to keep it very simple, straightforward, as we have seen in TX and even the GX, almost to the point where it is a bit plain and somewhat boring. So it's kind of like a, a business style or business execution design and not so fancy like this. So I would expect the TZ to also move toward that same trend, keep it simple, business-like, uh, you know, luxurious, but not overly like this one where you can see more chrome, some bronze trims and so forth. So I expect the interior will be nicer in the Mercedes in terms of luxury feel and maybe the TZ will feel a little bit more business-like. So that's sort of my prediction. But TZ will be roomier. It will be quite a bit roomier because it will be a full three-row passenger luxury vehicle. And um, based on what happened with uh, RZ though, maybe the range might not be as good as this one here. We'll have to wait and see how that goes. So what about in terms of range of the vehicle? Well, this one has 433 kilometers or roughly 270 miles. So not the best in class, but very good. Uh, more importantly, the charging from 10% to 80% happens in a very short 32 minutes. So you can get a pretty good range in a very short time if you use fast charging level two. And so that's promising. I would suspect Lexus should try to match something like that because they have been criticized with the RZ for not having enough range and for having a slow charging rate. So let's hope that will be the case, but we obviously don't know. Uh, so I expect the TZ to have 400 to 420 kilometer range as well. That's my estimate and 10 to 80 percent once again 30 to 40 minutes uh, or who knows maybe Lexus and Toyota will delay the introduction of the three-row electric car to let's say 2026 or 2027 when they're promising a new type of lithium batteries advanced lithium batteries they call it which promise to be far more efficient and faster than anything that they've ever introduced so they're claiming over a thousand miles of range and uh, 10 to 80 percent in like 15 to 20 minutes uh, around that time so that could become a true benchmark and could break or make the electric car segment for toyota and lexus but we're not quite sure yet if the new tz will be using the new lithium batteries or whether it will come out before that using more conventional batteries so that is something we're not sure yet i was expecting lexus to introduce the tz uh, this year with a conventional battery, which still uses lithium battery, but I'm kind of thinking that maybe they're going to delay by a year or two years and simply adopt a new advanced lithium battery. So we'll have to wait and see. So that kind of covers the interior of the EQE and also some of my uh, discussion around the range and the charging times for both the EQE and speculated numbers for the Lexus version. Now let's take this for a drive and see how this thing feels on the road.
Okay, so I'm now driving the EQE on the road, and I have been driving for a little while, and as expected from a Mercedes, it's very quiet, comfortable, and smooth, and even soft and plush to drive. Maybe even to, to, the, to their fault, in a sense that it might be a bit too soft and cushy for some people. It's definitely not a sporty electric car. It is more floaty and comfort-oriented. And that's what you expect from Mercedes anyway. So if you really want maximum refinement and smoothness, especially for passengers, they're going to love this vehicle just because it's uh, so smooth and quiet. On the other hand, I get a reasonable feedback on my steering. It is definitely a little bit light for my taste, but in terms of get, having some feedback, there is. And, and it's actually a little bit better than some other electric cars I've driven. And even the cornering is pretty flat. I guess with electric cars, all the weight is uh, underneath, which means the uh, center of gravity is very low. And it tends to feel very steady and stable anyway. And that is definitely the case with the uh, EQE. There's a tremendous amount of power and torque, 402 horsepower and whopping 633 pound-foot of torque. So if I step on the accelerator like this, as expected in the high-performance electric car, it just literally takes off. And that is maybe one very significant difference between electric cars and ICE or internal combustion engine vehicles. You just cannot get this kind of acceleration in the gasoline version. So I think it's a lot of fun to drive from that perspective. Um, but it is a little bit soft, my taste, as I mentioned, and the brakes are, are touchy. Something that they're working on and they've recalibrated that for 2024. Uh, but the brake feel has been one of the weak points for Mercedes electric car. And um, from my understanding, that's all being fixed up now for the new year. So what about the Lexus TZ or TZ? I don't know which way to uh, say it because I'm in Canada, but many of you guys are American. So I probably will just stick with TZ for now. Uh, again, we don't know much about it yet, but if you were to look at the RZ and compare the feel of that to other electric cars, then you'll get a feel for what the TZ might be because the RZ is very steady, extremely stable, and actually a little bit sportier than some other electric cars we have driven. And it has a typical Toyota slash Lexus feel to it. It has a, a very stable feel, not as floaty and not as soft and cushy as vehicles from Mercedes. So I expect the same for TZ, that you'll be smooth and quiet and comfortable and very predictable ride and very balanced and that it wouldn't be as uh, floaty or cushy as this one here. And so from that perspective, maybe they don't compete directly in a sense that uh, I think the Lexus will go after traditional Lexus slash Toyota buyers, whereas Mercedes will definitely be catering to the traditional European heritage or Mercedes heritage buyers who really likes this kind of feel. So smoothness is uh, number one here with the uh, EQE. And once again, this, despite the, the softness of the suspension, it definitely gets up and go if you step on it. So no shortage of power and torque. In terms of NVH, noise vibrations and harshness, absolutely no issue there as well. As I mentioned earlier, I didn't hear any squeaks or rattles while I'm driving. And as you can tell right now, it's very quiet. Nothing coming out of the doors or the headliners. Very quiet. It feels really solid as if this car was carved out of a single solid rock. It's just very, very steady feel to it. And I expect most Mercedes buyers will be very happy with that kind of feel. So I just stopped the car now so I can give you my final concluding remarks about EQE. Well, if you want a premium luxury electric car with a really good range and plenty of power and torque with a Mercedes-Benz feel to it, then, well, this is the best one to get for for about $105,000 Canadian, you get a truly world-class premium luxury car. However, if you were to consider many other options in this price range, then it becomes a bit tricky because each of the brands have their own feel and their own character. And there are plenty of competitors in this price range, both from Europe as well as from Asia and also from US. And so you have to kind of make up your mind which one's the right one for you. I think uh, when the TZ comes out eventually in a year or two or maybe even longer, it probably wouldn't be as luxurious and as plush as the Mercedes. And therefore, you will go after a slightly different market. 
but it could be quite a significant player if the advanced lithium battery goes into that new TZ and therefore it can claim a thousand miles or more of a range. That could be a game changer. But until then, this will remain as one of the best mid-size luxury and comfortable SUV for the money. So I hope you enjoyed my video and I would really appreciate it if you can give me a thumbs up, make some comments, and if you haven't done so yet, would you kindly subscribe as well. Until next video, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.